Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. They're polite. I mean, they just take the time for you. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. I like the Angels for what they've done for me. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to our producer and behind the camera, Jeff Durall. We're at the Herndon Clinic located at Albertson Hall on the campus of Fort Hayes State University with clinical coordinator and program specialist Jackie Jacobs as we find out more about the Herndon Clinic. Well, let's start with the, the basics, if we could, Jackie. What is a Herndon Clinic? The Herndon Speech Language Hearing Clinic is a part of the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Fort Hayes State University, a very vibrant part of that. Our department offers an undergraduate and a graduate degree in Communication Sciences and Disorders and Speech Language Pathology. And as a part of that, students who are in the program, especially the graduate students, require a lot of hands-on experience working with individuals who have speech language hearing disorders. So the Herndon Clinic provides them that opportunity to gain those experiences in a state-of-the-art clinic right here on campus. The clinic was originally founded back in 1954 by Dr. Geneva Herndon. Um, and since her, there have been a number of other people who have had a lot to do with uh, keeping our foundation strong here at the Herndon Speech Language Clinic. You know, Jackie, the Herndon Clinic has been a, an integral part of Fort Hayes State University for a long, long time. Yes, it definitely has. And the services that our students are able to provide benefit the campus community if there are those in need of speech language hearing services, benefit the local community, and also Western Kansas. We have individuals, parents who bring children, and adults who come to us from really miles around mm -hmm. in this area. We're kind of the place to get the, the adequate service mm -hmm. that's available to individuals. I think people have realized through the years that the professionalism the Herndon Clinic and the results the Herndon Clinic brings to those individuals in need, both adults and children, as you said, Jackie. Okay, now talk a little about the specifics of those areas. Okay. Uh, speech difficulties. Okay. What are we talking about here? So when we're talking about speech difficulties, it could be a young child who has difficulty pronouncing a specific sound mm -hmm. and may be difficult to understand because of the sound errors they have. It could be an individual of any age, really, who stutters mm -hmm. and is unable to get the words out fluently and needs help with that. Individuals may have di difficulties with their voice in which the voice just doesn't sound, if you want to call it pleasant, mm -hmm. or it may be hoarse, rough, scratchy. So those are all a part of speech disorders. Mm -hmm. um, in the area of language, these disorders can affect little on up, really, mm -hmm. any of these disorders can. So it may be a young child who is not talking yet, or parent may be concerned that the child isn't talking as much as they think they should be at a point in time. So as a speech language pathologist, we're able to intervene and provide um, the therapy and or resources for the family to mm -hmm. further facilitate the child's language development. All through school age though, children can have difficulties with understanding information that is spoken to them mm -hmm. or understanding written information. So we do help a lot of school children who have difficulties with reading, dyslexia, and understanding what they're reading. And then if I'm just going to keep working my way up the mm -hmm. spectrum, in the older adults, sometimes as a result of some sort of brain injury, whether it be a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, or some other neurological disease, individuals may have difficulty with language, unable to find their words or just express themselves clearly. Um, 
And so we're able to assist at that point in people's lives. Or someone may have memory loss, and we're able to provide them the strategies to function as independently as possible when something like that has occurred. And one other area that I haven't really touched on is the area of swallowing disorders. Mm -hmm. And that's something that people aren't always as familiar with. Here in our clinic, the experiences our students receive are typically with older individuals who, again, as a result of some sort of typically something within the brain, they're no longer able to swallow safely and effectively. So we provide therapy to help them to be able to consume the diet that they would like to consume mm -hmm. without any risk for choking or aspiration, which would be food entering into the airway. Wow. That's something that I was not aware that the Herndon Clinic was able to uh, treat and deal with. Yes, I sure are. All right. Now, uh, just as a point of information, going back to the early days, is there a benchmark that parents might use for when the child should begin to, to talk? Uh, is there an average uh, at which point a parent becomes concerned? There is a typical time at which you should expect to hear a child's first word, and it depends sometimes whose research you are reading, but typically around the age of one, you expect a child to start having a word here or there mm -hmm. that is not necessarily produced clearly. Mm -hmm. However, someone familiar with the child would know what the child is intending. But I do just want to say there is much variation there. And in many cases, a child may not really start speaking until 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. And it really just, again, there's variation. So I wouldn't want anyone to jump to conclusions if they don't hear their child say they, the first word on their first birthday. Mm -hmm. um, however, if a parent does have any concerns, talking with an, a professional in the education realm or a speech language pathologist specifically can help you better understand your child's development. I know that hearing is also a big yes. part of the Herndon Clinic. Talk a bit about hearing okay. services. So we offer hearing screenings and evaluations here on campus at the Herndon Clinic for all ages, from infants to the elderly. So individuals can come to us to, pro to receive that full audiological evaluation. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, receive information regarding the loss or not, no loss and provided information on the next steps in terms of if hearing amplification is recommended or what may be the next plan of action mm -hmm. to help the individual in that regard. We also do, as a clinic, we participate in a lot of off-campus activities where we provide services to places within the community and surrounding area. And along the lines of hearing, our students, along with our audiologists, go to Early Childhood Connections two mm -hmm. to three times a year to assist them with their annual hearing screenings that have to be completed on all of the preschool children there. We find that to be an excellent opportunity for our students. It's really hands-on for the students yes. to get involved in the day-to-day -day process of hearing uh, uh, tests and uh, treatments. Right. Talk a little about, uh, I saw a poster uh, as we were coming in about um, farm work and the relationship of loud machinery. And now, of course, with the, the headphones and the ear mm -hmm. pieces and such that are so prevalent nowadays that maybe this hearing loss could be increased over the years, you think, Jackie? I do think so. Any time when a person is exposed to loud noise and especially continuous loud noise, which loud noise may not seem all that loud to some people, but when it's over a long period of time, it really can have an impact. And what we call that is noise-induced hearing loss. So definitely farm machinery in, in this part of the state and country also, mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, the loud music and the earbuds. Mm -hmm. It's important that children and adults receive some education on the mm -hmm. impact of that loud noise or music or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it 
um, the impact that it can have later on in life. Because sometimes it may not be as obvious as a child is growing up, but mm -hmm. later on in life they may regret some of the decisions they made in terms of not protecting their hearing, but there are numerous hearing protection devices available for individuals. And that's something that we can help people learn more about when they come see us. Especially if you happen to be a rock and roll drummer in a band um, in the uh, <clears throat> earlier days <laughs> of his youth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about the uh, aqua therapy, the aquatic therapy. Is this a new program? This was new this past summer. We are always seeking ways to provide our students with new and different and just kind of cutting edge opportunities because um, we want our Fort Hayes State University speech language pathology students to leave here and go out and work with a breadth of experiences under their belt. So the aquatic speech therapy was Thanks to our assistant clinical coordinator, Brianna Taylor, and her really, I would say, always forward-thinking mind, and that she has been, had been seeing a young child here who has autism in the clinic for a number of semesters, and the child would soon be beginning school, so his services here were going to be somewhat reduced, so she really wanted to do something this summer to make an impact to help him not only here within the clinic, but in some other sort of real life event that he could be a part of. Um, the young boy often, because of the diagnosis of autism, can become very overstimulated in certain settings. Mm -hmm. Yet what was determined by a report of caregivers is that he's less overstimulated in the water. Mm -hmm. So Brianna wondered if that might be an ideal environment to provide his speech therapy mm -hmm. where he would be less stimulated. Um, so what she started was a combination speech therapy and swim lesson. She contacted the Center for Health Improvement and Kelly Flaska was very open to the idea of collaborating with us. So in a sense the child continued to receive speech therapy through the summer but as an added bonus learned a little bit more about swimming and water safety and just the structure of a swimming lesson and Brianna's and her clinician were able to implement visual supports, um, a social narrative which is kind of a, a story to help the child know what to expect at any given time mm -hmm. because again sometimes children with autism they need to have have a routine mm -hmm. and a structure and know what's next and so with the help of the speech therapist in conjunction with the swim lesson instructor, Brianna and her student were able to provide that to create a successful lesson and speech therapy session. And they really were just trying to target increased engagement from the child and increased communication. And the feedback from all parties involved has been extremely positive. Therefore, this is something we would consider again in the future. Mm -hmm. I know this summer kind of just lent itself to the opportunity nicely, um, but definitely something because of the positive experience that we would consider again. Jackie, in our final couple of minutes, uh, some future plans for the Herndon Clinic, maybe some new services that are being uh, in the process? Yeah, so I mentioned that we oftentimes provide services to off-campus sites already and that's a service that we provide but it's also very beneficial for our students to get the broadened experiences and currently some of those I mentioned early childhood connections but our students also provide some services at Holy Family Elementary School, Sacred Heart Elementary in Plainville, Good Samaritan Society here in Hayes and we're looking to expand those services and the types of services even more in that throughout the next couple semesters we're going to be because of a Masonic Foundation grant we received we're going to be expanding out into western Kansas to places like Goodland, Liberal I think mm -hmm. and setting up uh, stations basically to provide hearing screenings to people out in those communities. Mm -hmm. And also because of this recent Masonic Foundation grant, we're going to expand our services in the area of swallowing, 
in that we will soon, it's a work in progress, but we're getting there, be able to provide a not readily available service to area nursing homes, area in western Kansas. Mm -hmm. It's a type of swallowing evaluation that is not always done in many places because the equipment is not available, but we are purchasing the equipment and we have licensed certified speech language pathologists who will go and provide that service along with our students getting that experience as well. Thanks to this grant from the Masonic correct. Foundation. Correct, correct, yes. And finally, uh, if parents or others are interested in services of the Herndon Clinic, how do they get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch is to call our Herndon Clinic office at 785 628-5366. Once you make contact, typically what will happen is after you've explained basically what your interest is, typically a case history form will be mailed out to you. And then once that is completed and returned to us, we go ahead and get the individuals scheduled. In some cases, a doctor's referral is necessary likely depends on the insurance provider mm -hmm. but you'll be notified of that when you call into the office and in some cases too doctors or other professionals will contact us before the individual saying we're referring this patient to you and if that is the case then we follow up with the patient to let them know we've received a referral and we'd like to get some additional information in order to get you scheduled for services. From the Herndon Clinic at Albertson Hall on the campus of Fort Hayes State University, Clinical Coordinator and Program Specialist Jackie Jacobs, our Community Connection. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. And the Angel Care nurse comes to see me once a week. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angel Care has helped to, to stay home. Angels Care Home Health, we serve patients.